We have been creating classes for a while, so let's go ahead and take a look and see exactly what they are. Whenever you say public class, class 101, you're creating a class, and the definition of a class is a template or blueprint from which individual objects are created. Now we really haven't gone over object yet, so this definition really doesn't have much meaning to it. So instead of looking for a definition, let's see what a class is comprised of. And in order to see what a class is comprised of, I'm going to use the example of a class called student. And classes usually have two things inside of them, data values and methods. The data values are the beers in the class or the nouns. They exist. Name, ID, grade level, or GPA could all be data values in my class called student. And then the methods of a class are the doers. So instead of being something, they do something with the data. So get name, get ID, get grade level, and get GPA all do something inside of a program. And when you put these two things together, data values and a method in the same container, you get something called a class. A class contains data values and methods. Now in this video, I'm not going to focus on the data values, but rather I'm going to focus on methods or the doers of a class. And methods can be identified by a statement having parentheses after it. So if you look at the code in the middle of this program, you can see that there's actually two methods here, the main method and the print line method. The main method is being created and print line is being called or invoked. In this video, we're not going to focus on creating methods like the main method. We're going to focus on calling or invoking a method. And in order to focus on calling or invoking a method, we're going to be using a class called the math class. And the math class has a series of methods in it that all relate to performing some kind of mathematical function. In this example, we see root parentheses 16. If we were to run this code right now, we would not see root 16 We would see the square root of 16 is 4. And so math.squareRoot is performing the function or task of finding the square root of the value passed to it, which is 16. Let's go ahead and break this method down into its different parts. So we have math.squirt parentheses 16. The first word math is the class, or it's where we're getting the methods from. Square root comes from the math class. The next part is the dot operator, and the dot operator is just giving us access. So in this case, it's saying square root is of the math class. Square root is the method name, and it is the task that we're performing. Remember, it's the tools of a class, or the doers of a class. And then finally, we have the parameter or argument. And you can have one argument, no arguments, or multiple arguments, as we'll soon see. But math.squareRoot only has one argument, and that is, in this case, 16. So when math.squareRoot16 is called, it would take the parameter and find the square root, returning it to the program, and it would print out 4 in our system out print line statement. Next, let's look at a different method of the math class, and that is .pow. Pow takes the first argument and raises it to the power of the second argument. So if we were to run this program right now, it would say 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Arguments or parameters are separated by commas. In between the 3 and the 4, we have a comma indicating that 3 is the first value to be worked on and 4 is the second value to be worked on. In most cases, order does matter. And we can see that instead of 3, 4, I did pow 4, 3. And so this would say 4 to the power of 3 is 64, giving us a different result. So the order in which we place the arguments is important to its result. Next, what if I said 4,000 to the power of 3,000? And if I tried to print that out, that would give us an error. And the error might be subtle, but if you look at it closely, you can see that we have extra commas in there. Do not use commas as separators or placeholders for integer or double values. It will think that the commas are separating the parameters. So instead of having two parameters, something to the power of something else, it thinks that you want four parameters. And the four parameters would be four, three zeros, 
three and then three more zeros. This will cause an error, so be careful with commas. Methods do not have to have parameters. In this example, let's look at another method of the math class, and that is math.random. And what it does is it finds a random value between 0 and 1. And I show this not necessarily to show its functionality, but I want to go back to the point that a method will always have parentheses. Math.random does not have any parameters or arguments. It doesn't need anything to be passed to it. But it does have the parentheses at the end of random because for something to be a method in Java, it has to have those parentheses. If the parentheses are not there, it would consider it to be a variable, not a method. So here are three examples that we've gone over, math.square root, math.pow, and math.random. You can pass values to square root and pow, and they will return something to the program like 4 or 81. In math.random, you don't even have to pass anything to it, and it will return a value between 0 and 1 to the program. The concept that I want to show in this slide is something called information hiding. When you're flying in an airplane, you don't necessarily know exactly everything that's going on inside of the cockpit. But you do know that the plane is going to take off, take you to your destination, and land. And so we don't necessarily have to know the details. This is an important concept in computer science, and it is borne out in methods. Methods of other classes, or things that you did not implement, you usually have no idea how they work. You just know that you give it some value and it returns something back to you. And a great thing about it is you don't have to worry about how it works. You just know that it does. So when I invoke or call square root, it's going to give me the square root of 16. And as to how it does it, we don't care. We just care that it works and works correctly every time. As stated in the first slide, a class is a template or blueprint from which individual objects are created. This isn't very helpful right now because we haven't looked at objects. But what is helpful is what does a class contain? And a class contains two things, data values and methods. The data values are the beers. So the methods do something and they're like a verb in the English language. They're going to perform some kind of action for the class. A method will always have parentheses. Even if it does not require an argument or a parameter, a method requires parentheses at the end. So just like math.random does not require anything to be passed to it, it does require parentheses at the end, otherwise it would not be considered a method. Arguments or parameters are separated by a comma. So if you have more than one argument, you're going to separate it by a comma, and the compiler is going to know that when it reaches a comma, it's on to a new argument. Be careful when putting arguments into a method that you put them in the correct order. Sometimes it will not matter, like if you had a method that just added two values together. So 5 plus 4 is 9, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So no matter what order you put them in, it doesn't matter. But most of the time, the parameters do matter, as in the case of math.pal. 4 to the power of 3 is different from 3 to the power of 4. And finally, when using methods of other classes, we usually do not know their implementation, nor do we care. We just care that it was implemented correctly and gives us the correct result every time. And this is done on purpose so as to help with program design and make things easier for a programmer. Methods in Java usually perform a single task, and they're the action part of a class. If there is something to be done inside of a class, there is usually a method that will do it. In Java, common methods are grouped into containers called classes along with data attributes.